Hey guys, this is Ross Ratty, and today I want to talk to you guys about fertilizing your fruit trees um, that are in containers. I want to talk to you guys about the soil composition that I recommend uh, for containers for any kind of edible fruit tree, shrub, or vine. And then I also want to talk about mulching your containers and why I believe that's so important. Before I get into that though, guys, I want to give you a little bit of a background on myself and show you guys just a little bit of what I'm growing. We have about 100 fig trees here on the, contain on the, uh, on the patio in containers. You know, I also have on the wall here uh, many different pomegranates in containers. We have on the other side of the wall is a whole multitude of pears and apples and stone fruits and chi and jujubes and grapevines. On the other side of the house, we have things like persimmons and loquats and blueberries, bush cherries, you know, all kinds of different um, things that I'm growing in containers. And that's kind of what I want to show you is that I have, you know, lots of experience doing this. Uh, I've been doing this, you know, now for four years. Um, you know, I've learned a lot. I like to try different methods, different things to kind of uh, get a better understanding, but also uh, really try to fine-tune my craft. All right, so let's get into this. Uh, the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is the soil. And your soil needs to be well-draining. Um, that is key number one, okay? You need to have, I like to use a soil conditioner, it's called. This is... Um, essentially a potting mix that you can get at the store they're labeled potting mix you also have things that can be labeled raised bed soil or garden soil i like to use soil conditioners because out of all of those different choices a soil conditioner is the most well draining um, growing things in containers can very easily hold too much water and create problems of root rot This is very common, I'm sure a lot of you guys are watching right now, have killed many plants, including myself, to root rot. In order to combat root rot, okay, you have to have a well-draining soil. Either you water less, the appropriate amount, or you have a well-draining soil and you can almost water as much as you want. It's really important that when we're selecting a soil, we are thinking about the structure of the soil that we want to create. This is going to give you, I promise you, the best results is your soil structure, having the right porosity, the right drainage. And the only way you're going to do that is by one, either buying a soil conditioner or creating your own. Lots of people can easily create their own. You can, you can uh, make your own compost. I definitely recommend that the base of your, of your soil be either compost based or worm casting based. And you can use either of those two products that you can either buy or create yourself. And then you're going to want to add something that is going to make that more well draining because the compost and the worm castings will hold that water, which is important, right? We want to hold water in our containers because containers dry out much easier than something that's in the ground, right? We have to water our containers much more. They have much more access to heat they're also getting blasted by the sun all day. But at the same time, we don't want to be growing our containers in a swamp, right? We don't want to be having them just sit in water all the time, getting hit with root rot. So my recommendation, and I like to buy this product because it's already pre-mixed for me, you know? Uh, this is a brand called Just Natural. No, I don't get paid by them. I should get paid by them. But, um... I love to use this product because it's 50% compost and 50% pine bark. And that's a good percentage there, okay? So you can look at this guy. I mean, just look at this soil. You could tell that it's a high quality soil. It's compost, so it's very black. This is really nutrient dense stuff. But we're not really concerned with nutrients when it comes to our soil. That's really what our fertilizers are for and our uh, other soil amendments that are micronutrients, you know. Um, in containers, guys, you know, you're really not going to get a lot of your nutrients from the soil itself. The soil over time is going to deplete in nutrients very quickly. You know, these are very hungry trees, you know. They need a lot of nutrients, 
You know, unlike something that's a garden bed that's filled with annuals every year, you know, here's all a lot of my uh, annuals that I planted this year. You can see that, you know, even something like broccoli is a heavy feeder. But every single year, you should be amending your soil with some kind of compost, right? That's the goal, is increasing the fertility of your garden beds every year. But you can't do that in a container setting. You just can't, right? You fill up the container with soil, and unless you put it into a larger container, uh, you're not gonna be really be able to add any more soil. This is the level of soil that will forever be in this pot if I let it, you know? If I keep it in this pot for the next five years, which I plan to, uh, minimum, you know, this is gonna be the soil that's in there. We can obviously do some root pruning. We can remove some soil. I did a video on that, guys, if you haven't seen that. You can cut out some of that and then add new soil. But the point I'm trying to make is that this stuff here, the soil, is really for structure, uh, increasing that porosity. And things like um, peat moss and perlite and vermiculite, that's what a lot of big box nursery growers like to use. It's cheap, but I don't find that it's the best. I've used everything known to man um, in my soils to experiment and figure out what's really the best stuff. I find that it doesn't really get much better in terms of structure, in terms of long-term health, uh, than compost or worm castings. It just, it just doesn't. And then I also like to use something uh, called pine bark or any kind of bark you can get a hold of. I find that really is uh, a great soil amendment. Now, especially for adding structure. Now this is another product here that I love to use. This is called rice hulls. And I love to use this as mulch. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Uh, but you can also use this as an amendment. You can mix this in here with compost, no problem. And this will add drainage. This will increase the porosity of your pots. And um, what's nice about this stuff is it also adds something called silicone. And silicone um, does some really amazing things. And there's a couple professors from a couple different universities that really, really are big proponents of this stuff. If there's anyone out there that really knows about the crust of the earth, you actually know that most of the earth is made up of silicone. Um, but in certain areas, in certain farms, in certain settings, you may actually not have nearly as much silicone as you thought, and your plants may be missing that. And there's a lot of scientists out there, professors that believe that this stuff really does some amazing things for your plants. So that's what I'm focusing on this year is adding um, this product here, rice holes, as a silicone supplement. But it also is twofold, right? It also can um, work as a mulch and it can also work as a soil amendment. I, you know, I actually get this stuff in a, a seven, ca uh, seven cubic foot bag here. It's quite big. And I get this for like seven fifty or $7 a bag from a company called AM Leo. They sell online and they'll ship this to your door uh, for no shipping at certain times of the year. So in the beginning of the year, usually they'll, they'll have the free shipping that comes out in the winter time and they'll ship this to my door um, in the winter time. I'll just stockpile this stuff and then I'll have mulch for the entire year to mulch all my containers with. And I even mulch my garden beds with this stuff now because it's if that silicone stuff is as great as everybody's saying it is, then I want to use it. So let's talk about fertilizers here, guys. This is a product that I use called Florican. This is an inorganic, slow-release fertilizer that will feed my plants for five months. And I really like to use this stuff because I have so many containers, guys. That's the only reason I use it. Um, I would alternatively use um, something that's organic. You can find something from Dr. Earth. You can find something from Job's. They're all sold in the big box stores. Um, they're a little bit more expensive and that's why I can't use them, right? You have to apply them multiple times throughout the season. You know, for someone like me that has 200 containers, it's just not feasible. It's too expensive for me. I just can't do it. But if I was doing this and I only had 20 containers or less, that's exactly what I would be using. Basically, this stuff will last somewhere in the neighborhood between four and six months. You can also get a product called 
Osmocote at the bigger box stores. I get this in bulk in a 50 pound bag and it's cheaper that way for me. Um, there's also things out there, guys, called fast release fertilizers that I also use. Um, the absolute best one to use um, is called Alaska's Fish Fertilizer. It's an Alaskan fish, I guess, that they grind up and it kind of composts down into a fertilizer. Um, that stuff is insanely smelly. <laughs> it smells horrible, uh, but it is the best thing to use. I haven't come across a single fertilizer that will beat that stuff. If you can't use that, I would use something synthetic uh, that I also can, you can get in bulk. Um, you know, I wouldn't use something like miracle Grow, but that's kind of similar to the effect of what I'm talking about in terms of a fast release. It lasts uh, a short period of time. It gives a very quick shot of fertilizer to these plants, but you need to be careful because if you give your plants too much fertilizer, too much Osmocote, too much um, synthetic fertilizers, you get a thing called salt buildup in your plants, in the pots, which will kill the roots and eventually kill the tree. So too much fertilizer is bad, but in terms of organic fertilizer, you can use as much as you want and never get that salt buildup. It is the chemical reaction that creates that salt buildup. The NPK, those are like three numbers there. It stands for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. You know, NPK. So each fertilizer has that number on there and tells you exactly how much NPK they give. But some things like gypsum or even lime don't have an NPK. They will give you micronutrients. And there's many different micronutrients. The NPK, by the way, is the macronutrients. And certain even um, fertilizers like this that have the NPK will include, including this one here, includes a whole variety of micronutrients. I like to give my trees lots of calcium. Um, I find that particularly figs in, in general love calcium. You can find them growing native um, in different places and they really thrive in places that have calcium rich soils. So if you can give them um, you know, any kind of calcium, magnesium or sulfur, those are the three biggest micronutrients, you're going to be better off. There's also products out there that I have used in the past that I would use currently, it's just I can't afford it. Uh, something called Ironite, there's also Azomite, and there's also the organic version of those called Green Sand. And uh, the three of those really cover the entire basis of micronutrients um, that are out there. Um, and all plants need every single micronutrient, just like we as humans need every single vitamin and mineral to survive and to function better, plants need the same thing. So uh, I really recommend using uh, a pr one of those three products or alternatively getting a slow release fertilizer or a fertilizer in general that has a lot of those micronutrients in it. Uh, it's very important to cover all your bases. You know, in getting a soil test here on your property, that's what people do is they get a soil test to see if they're nu uh, nutrient deficient and any of those micronutrients. And by doing that, they, then they can then correct that micronutrient deficiency and add in um, that particular nutrient. So without doing a soil test on every single container, guys, <laughs> I like to just cover my basis with every single micronutrient that I can find. Um, I also like to use something called um, rock phosphates. And rock phosphate, um, I think really gives a nice boost to the plants when you're transplanting them from one container to the other. Um, they really need to attach themselves to the soil. They give a nice boost of phosphate. They really help in my mind with uh, root growth. Again, I would be using this, but I can't afford it. That one though in particular, you have to put it on the bottom of the container where the root zone is. You can't just put it on top and top dress it like the rest of the stuff that I've mentioned. Um, the last thing I like to use here, guys, is something called diatomaceous earth. And we talked about rice holes and using them as a mulch, uh, using the rice holes as uh, even a soil amendment or adding this to our soils to add composition. So does the diatomaceous earth, and that's exactly what this is in here. 
Um, it is organic. It actually is food grade as well. You can find a lot of people feed their, their livestock with this stuff to add um, some structure to the, to the feed that they give them. And I find this stuff is also adding quite a lot of silicones.